food, most people start thinking about meats and proteins and things like that. And actually, the amount of effort and energy you put in to actually get that, sometimes you're expending more energy than you're actually gaining. So I normally, when I'm in a situation where I'm trying to survive, is I hit the food, the plant sources first. Because generally they don't run away. You can catch them, you can sneak up on them, and they, you know, they're not going to be taken by surprise. Yes, you're not getting a massive amount of calories out of them, but it's got a psychological effect on you as well. You feel as though you're gaining something, you're doing something. And actually the gain, sometimes you can get some of the food you can eat, the gain you get for the amount of energy you expend puts you in a better balance than if you're trying to catch, catch some meat. So the easiest way to work out whether you can eat the plant or not is to have that knowledge. But there is a, a, a pretty simple tried and tested method. They say don't eat anything red, because red can be poisonous. But strawberries are quite nice, tomatoes are quite nice, so that one doesn't really work. Don't eat anything that smells of pears. But pears are quite nice. So obviously if it is a pear and it smells of pears, then happy days you can eat it. And say the same with almonds, because you've got cyanide and arsenic that they've got that sort of smell and taste. If it smells of almonds and it is an almond, it's probably all right to eat. If it smells of pears and it is a pear, it's probably all right to eat. If it's not, it's got arsenic or cyanide in it and you'll end up dead. So there's a number of plants that you can do a test on to see whether it's edible or not. The first rule of thumb is there has to be lots of that plant around. There's no point picking a sort of a nice bush here that's got a nice red strawberry looking fruit on it and then over here we've got an orange grove with like 50 orange trees and thousands of oranges. You, you test that first because you've got a massive food source once you've got that as opposed to this where you've not got a massive amount of food. So you need to find an area where there's one particular plant that you're going to test where there's lots of it. There's lots of this stuff that looks like clover. Now I know this is edible so I'll show you the test on this stuff. So what you do, and you have to do this for every single part of the plant. So if you're going to eat the leaves you have to test the leaves. If you're going to eat the stem you have to test the stem. If you're going to eat the root you have to test the root. Uh, rhubarb is a classic example. You can eat the stalk but you can't eat the leaves. Because the leaves are poisonous. So first thing you do is you take a small piece of it and you crush it and put it onto a sensitive part of your body, a bit like you were perfume testing. And you're going to wait 15-20 minutes. And in that 15-20 minutes, are you scratching and itching away at it? Has it gotten red and blotchy? Have you got blisters? Have you felt dizzy? Have you, have you, have you been sick or passed out? If none of that's happened, you can move on to the next stage of the test where you lick your lips and take another piece of it and just rub it on your lips and you're waiting 15-20 minutes have your lips swollen up, have you gone dizzy, have you, have you vomited, have you dropped down dead if none of that's happened you then go to another a small amount you crush a piece and you put it between your lip and your gum just there again 15-20 minutes so slowly your ingestion a little bit more each time so you're not going to swallow it, you're not going to eat it. And you're looking for the same reaction. Is your throat swelling up? Do you feel a burning sensation down the back of your throat? Well, you can think of various, you know, think of a, a pepper. It's red, so you're not going to eat it because it's dangerous and you're going to get a burning sensation when you put it in your mouth. So how, how do we work out that that's edible? It's quite, it's quite a strange one to figure out that. So then you move on to the next level of the test. So by this point you're pretty much an hour in. <laughs> you're starving. Yeah, and you're looking at this and you're thinking, wow. So you take another small amount, you chew it, and you spit it out. So you're releasing some of the juice of that, that leaf in, and you're swallowing that, so you slowly start to swallow a little bit down your throat. You're looking for the same sort of reactions. That's alright, none of that happens. Then, you can take a small amount, and eat it. Chew it. Swallow it. You then got to wait eight hours, and in those eight hours, you've not got to eat or drink anything. So it's normally the thing you do just before you go to bed. So you wake up in the morning. Whoever's done the expert, you poke them with a stick to see if they're still alive. If they are, happy days. We can now eat that food. 